Word of God. He empowers God's people to stand up and use the Word of God to change their situations. Jesus came Jesus to make it possible for you and for me to be free. You were not created to enjoy life, you were created to enjoy life. That devil is a loser. He delivers those who are tormented by demons. He heals the sick and afflicted. He also helps those who are frustrated by evil dreams and generational bloodline curses to get total freedom. He continues to transform many lives through his TV ministry and outreach gospel campaigns. His powerful sermons are also available on YouTube. Listen and be blessed. Welcome to our program, The Victorious Life. The Victorious Life, the life of victory, in other words, with Apostle Justice, your host. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 14, it says, Thanks be unto God, who always leads us in triumph or in victory through Jesus Christ, so that by us he may spread everywhere the fragrance, the sweet fragrance of the knowledge of his name. What does this verse mean? It means God wants you and me to always become victorious, to always experience victory over all the challenges that we face day by day, so that by the victory that God gives us, his name may be glorified, his name may be advertised. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible also says in the book of First Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 57, it says, thanks be unto God who always gives us the victory, who always gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. So that's why in our program we say the victory victorious life, the victorious life through Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to experience victory. I want you to conquer all the problems and the challenges that you face day by day. Even any challenge that has been troubling your life for quite some time. I want you to rise and become victorious over it. I want you to rise and become stronger than your challenge because that is God's plan and desire for all of us, his children. Praise the name of the Lord. All of us, his people. God does not want us to be people who are always experiencing defeat after defeat. He wants us to become victorious. Hallelujah. So for you to become victorious, I, Apostle Justice, I am going to equip you because I need to tell you just from the onset, my ministry's emphasis, I emphasize in teaching and equipping God's people. As the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 11 and 12, the Bible says, God gave some to be apostles, to be prophets, to be evangelists, to be teachers and pastors for the equipping of the saints so that the saints may engage in the work of ministry, meaning so that the people of God may rise above their challenges, enter a new level of maturity and come to a level of being able to minister to other people, demonstrating God's power to other people, helping other people to come out of their challenges. Hallelujah. Remember, I am alive to be a blessing to my generation. You are alive to be a blessing to a generation. You are not alive just to merely exist, to merely survive. You are alive to live a fulfilled life. You must be fulfilled as an individual. It means you must fulfill your purpose and you must also rise and become a blessing to other people. Praise the name of the Lord. And as Apostle Justice, I'm going to be equipping you, teaching you, help you to know how to live your life victoriously. 
praise the name of the Lord. In the sermon of last week, I was talking to us to say, you need to overcome what I call the seven major misfortunes of life. It means you must experience total deliverance from the seven misfortunes. You need to rise and become a victorious individual because the Bible says, all those who are born of God, they overcome. All those who are born of Jehovah, they've got power to rise above every problem and overcome it. Praise the name of the Lord. Today we're going to read as a scripture that I know this scripture will bless you. It will be two verses. The first one is in the book of Obadiah chapter number one. We will read verse number 17. Hallelujah. But on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. On Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. I want to use this portion of scripture as a typology of the life of a Christian and individual who is born again. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's remind each other that God when he created me and you, he never created us for a life of failure, a life of suffering, a life of struggling, a life of endless disappointments. God created us to live a blessed life. That's why in Genesis 1 verse number 26, the Bible records it and say, God said when he was creating us, let us make men in our image and according to our likeness. It means let's allow them to come to be at our level. Heaven. Hallelujah. Image and likeness. Function like God to possess the attributes and the qualities of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And then he said, let them have dominion. Dominion over all creation. Dominion over all that God created. It, it means exercise authority and have rule over all creation, even over the devil. That is the original master plan of Jehovah, our God, our creator. He created us to live a life of rising above every challenge, rising above all that was created by God, subduing it in other words. Hallelujah. That's why in, the, in verse number 28, the Bible says, and God blessed them. He blessed the female species and the male species. He blessed them. He said, let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Let them be fruitful. Let them multiply. So you must remember, always understand this because I could be on this program. You are sitting there at home watching me. You are hopeless. You have given up. Oh my God. You are miserable because it looks like nothing is working out in your life. That's why I am here on our program, The Victorious Life. Jesus said in John 8, 32, look at that verse. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Please pay attention because I am Apostle Justice. I am a life coach. I teach you what to do because it is better to face challenges with the accurate, appropriate information, knowing what to do. That's why they say information leads to your transformation. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 9, the precious people of God will be delivered from their problems through knowledge. So you need to have knowledge. You need to walk in the light. Hallelujah. You must be enlightened. Praise the name of the Lord. So this verse we are reading, it says, Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. I'm receiving endless emails and phone calls of people who are saying, Man of God, my life is upside down. Man of God, I go to church, I love the Lord, but my life is stagnant. Man of God, I love the Lord, I go to church, but myself and my siblings, my family people, we are plagued. We are troubled by endless sickness and diseases. Our lives are miserable. Nothing good is happening. I want to put a stop to all this miserable, painful state and conditions that God's people find themselves in. The Bible here says, upon Mount Zion there shall be what? Deliverance. That
that's why there are a lot of Christians today. They can't live a holy life. They can't live an upright life. They are forced to compromise. They do things that they don't even like to do. Some are doing things that are even ruining their lives, ruining their dignity. They drink alcohol. They do all sorts of things. They are in drugs because of frustrations that's why we need to come and bring a solution like i promised you last week we are bringing a lasting solution you need to follow my program follow these teachings and listen to other teachings of other servants of god who are preaching the word of liberation the word of deliverance the word of healing the word of transformation that will realign your life so that you live your life according to god's plan praise the name of the lord God said it, even David, you know, he echoes what I've just shared with you concerning you living a good life, a better life, a victorious life. David says in the book of Psalm chapter number eight, what is a human being in verse number five? For you, oh God, to be mindful of him. You are mindful of the human being. He says you've made him to be a little lower than Elohim. He said you have, you have crowned him with honor and glory. Shamefulness, poverty, sickness and disease and suffering. That is not God's original plan. Maybe that's why when Jesus came, when you read the Bible in the book of John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, I have come. I have come so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus wants you to have a good life. That's why we come with our slogans. We say the victorious life through Jesus Christ, the better life through the teachings you receive from Apostle Justice, the servant of the Lord. So I'm going to help you experience total deliverance and begin to live a life of victory. Please pay attention. I'll tell you what you need to do and you must begin to practice these things and as a lifestyle hallelujah but before we get there i want to just show you the mind of god in the book of luke luke chapter number one the bible is clear that zechariah said this god has raised for us a horn of salvation he has raised unto us a savior from the house of david whose name is jesus he said through this jesus we shall be delivered from the hands of our enemies. He has ordained, God has arranged that we are going to be delivered from the hands of our enemies so that we might serve God in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. In other words, the Bible says he had arranged that we shall be delivered from the hands of our enemies so that we might serve the Lord without fear. That fear there talks of hindrances. It talks of limitations. Things that are blocking us. Things that are disturbing us in our serving God. That's what I want us to destroy from your lives this day going forward. Praise the name of the Lord. So there are people that I need to help specifically. If you fall in this category, I will tell you what to do. I told you last week, there are people who suffer from the spirit of stagnation, whether as an individual or that person together with her, his or her family members. All of them, their lives are experiencing stagnation. They never move forward. I mean, they remain in one place financially, one place in the job, nothing is moving forward. Yet God wants you to be progressive. He wants you to move forward in life. He wants you to keep on achieving greater and greater things. The spirit of stagnation, I destroy it right now in the name of Jesus. And then other people experience the number two misfortune. I call it the misfortune of being plagued by chronic diseases that result in the early deaths. You discover that in this family, the people are suffering from a condition of heart problems or a condition of chronic diseases like cancer and all these other limiting diseases that attack people, individuals and families. And it's a misfortune that must be broken. It's a misfortune that must be stopped because you can't really fulfill your purpose if you are stopped or cut short by a chronic disease. Some people are experiencing 
the misfortune of tragic deaths. You discover that in this family, people of this family or members of this family are either shot dead or they die tragically in accidents in the motorways. They die tragically. You know, their lives are cut short. It's a misfortune following this family. We shall stop it in the name of Jesus for the Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. It means to all those who run to the church, run to God and surrender their lives to God. All these cases, all these misfortunes must be stopped. Hallelujah. And then the fourth curse that I've seen, the misfortune that follows families, it is the misfortune of losses, losses of assets, losses of money. It means this particular individual or this family, they keep on losing large amounts of money or they lose money, good money making opportunities or they lose assets. You discover that this man has worked so hard by the time he dies, he has lost his houses, he has lost his cars, he has lost so much money, he's losing. It's a misfortune of losing good things, losing money, losing assets. You discover that this individual, Ufagi Malwai, investor in a particular project, it results in huge losses. Utola Lomunduso Serena Matezi Kwelet. Oh my God, I'm Apostle Justice, the servant of the Lord. I declare that the spirit of losing money, losing good things, losing, you know, assets, losing opportunities, that spirit of losing, I break it in the name of Jesus and I declare that your life will rise and do well in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how long you've been losing. We are now putting a stop. Now that you have met me through this TV channel we are putting a stop. Your life will take a new turn. There shall be a turn around. Your life will go forward and upward. Hallelujah. Other people they experience what is called the spirit of failure to access good things. The spirit of being rejected. It's a spirit of rejection. You discover that you are qualified, you have a diploma, you have a degree, you have a skill, but you are failing to get or to secure a good job. Or you are failing to secure money to start a good business. You are being rejected. Upon your life there is what is called a spirit of rejection. Other people are having it easy, but you when you appear, you are rejected. Doors keep on shutting. Doors keep on closing for you. It's a negative spirit. It's a misfortune. It must be broken. We have to put a stop because the Bible says those who run to Jehovah upon Mount Zion, those who come to the Lord, they must experience deliverance so that they can live holy lives and begin to possess good things that God has planned for them. You can't possess anything if there's a spirit of rejection upon your life because even if you start a relationship, that spirit of rejection will scatter that relationship. It doesn't matter what you try to do. If there's a spirit of rejection, you will keep on losing. Praise the name of the Lord. The sixth thing that I want to deal with is the misfortune, the misfortune of miscarriage. Failure, barrenness and miscarriage. I've combined the two. Barrenness, these are the people you go into marriage you discover that instead of conceiving children and bringing forth children, you keep on miscarrying, miscarrying, miscarrying. You keep on having, you know, premature birth and premature birth and these children, they don't survive. As a result, you are barren. You are not producing children. We need to break that spirit of barrenness in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. And I declare it shall be broken from your life in Jesus mighty name. Oh my God. And then the last misfortune, it is the misfortune of failure in relationships. My God, you find that this family, maybe it's ladies in one family or it's brothers in one family, they are failing to secure stable relationships. You find that this guy has been moving from woman to woman, nothing is stable. Children with different women, that kind of life will not have a good continuation because when you've got children 
children now from different mothers. You know, you are dealing with different people for different children. How will your life take a proper shape? It's a spirit of failure in relationships. Hallelujah. You are failing to secure a stable relationship. It's a curse. Maybe it has come from your ancestral foundations because you'll discover that even your father or your mother, they were never stable in relationships. I'm here. I'm Apostle Justice. I want to lift you to a new platform where your life will become stable and very progressive. Your life must make a good progress. It's very unfortunate because what I'm talking about, even servants of God, those who are preachers of the gospel, you find that they've got this syndrome. They've got this misfortune. In relationships, nothing is working out. In relationships, it's problems after problems. Such that you find that this person without intending has gone through several divorces, has gone through many relationships where money was even invested in. At the end of it all, the spirit of failure in relationships, it scatters everything. So you can never make a good progress in terms of investments, asset and equity acquisition. If you keep on breaking relationships, breaking relationships. Some people cannot even maintain a good job and stay there in one stable job because of the spirit of failure in relationships. Today we are going to destroy a dear child of God. I am here with the specific anointing that deals with these syndromes. I want your life to be free. Praise the name of the Lord. So you are saying to me, man of God, what must I do? I will now tell you what to do so that you experience total deliverance. Hallelujah. You must experience total, total deliverance. Let's take a short break. I shall be back. Between now and end of this year, end of December, I want to assure you, no matter who you are watching me on this television, you shall be totally delivered. Your life will experience a turnaround. You'll be delivered from this misfortune of sickness and disease, sickness and endless pains in your body. You'll be delivered even from the evil spirits that torment you at night. You'll be delivered from the curse of failure, failure to secure good money, failure to secure a good job. Failure in relationships. Why? Because in the sermon that I'm preaching these days, I'm telling you, God wants you to experience total deliverance and become stronger than your challenges. He wants you to live a victorious life. Hallelujah. That's why I've prepared for you a very important deliverance package which you must get. I give you a daily prayer manual. This daily prayer booklet. It helps you to be strong in your intimacy with God. Your prayer when you are praying to God, you must feel God. I've designed a book that will help you feel God when you pray. Number two, I've designed a deliverance manual. This is a deliverance manual that will deliver you from evil spirits, from bad dreams, from bad luck, from all these things that are tormenting you, even which Craft. It will deliver you and your family. So I've designed a deliverance pack. I call it the Apostle Justice Deliverance Pack. Hallelujah. You must come to my meetings. You'll get it. Just bring 500 dead. It will give you three powerful CDs. The first CD is for deliverance from generational bloodline cases and the seven misfortunes I was talking about. I myself pray with you in that CD in your home. The second CD is for deliverance deliverance from financial misfortune and failure. The third CD is for teaching you how to connect yourself with an anointed servant of God. And then you also get my special anointing oil that you use. That anointing oil is for destroying every evil spell that was placed upon your life, placed upon your family, placed upon your home, placed upon your, you know, your children. It's a deliverance pack. 500 rand. Even if you don't come with an offering. Just come and take the deliverance pack. Take it home and things are going to happen. You take seven days, seven full days fasting and praying for seven days using the deliverance pack. Things will change. 
they will change in your business they will change in your life they will change upon your children they will change everywhere because time has come for you to be delivered praise the name of the lord you must get the deliverance pack of apostle justice call the numbers on the screen and get more details before i forget i need to remind you this month of november december please write down these dates hallelujah write down these dates where i am going to be with you on the 17th of November, which is Saturday, I'm in KZN. Call the numbers on the screen. They will tell you where we are meeting. KZN from 10 a.m. I'm coming with more powerful packages. I'm going to give you more power to conquer your stubborn problems. And remember what I always say. Keep on appearing before an anointed servant of God until your problems and your troubles disappear. What did I say? Keep on appearing before an anointed servant of God until your problems disappear. Never do a hit and run. You will never win like that. As long as the man of God, the servant of God is a true servant of God. Keep on appearing. Let the servant of God release the anointing upon you. Pray for you until your problems are destroyed. Hallelujah. So I'm coming to KZN on the 17th. And then on the 18th, it's a Sunday. It's a special Sunday. My God, people of Chow they in Soweto. I'm coming back again to finish my assignment at the Unity Fellowship Church with Pastor Mukuba. It will be powerful. Service starts 10 a.m. It will be too strong. I will join forces with that anointed servant of God, Pastor Mukuba. We will destroy all the witchcraft. We will crush every problem in your life because Jesus wants you to be free. So 18 November, Sunday, this very Sunday, I'm here in Soweto, Chawela, with Pastor Mukuba. It will be strong. Come from everywhere. Let's jam pack that place. Let's come and sit under that strong anointing, a combined anointing of the woman of God and apostle justice. Your life will never be the same. Amen. Cape Town, Cape Town. On the 26th of November, it's a Monday, I am coming to Cape Town. Hallelujah. I'm coming to Cape Town. It's a Monday. So you must ask for a Monday off. Hallelujah. So that you come and meet me. People of Cape Town have been calling me, crying. I'm coming to Cape Town. Call the numbers on the screen and register and find out where the man of God will be. Hallelujah. And then where am I going? I'm in East London. I'm going to be there in East London the whole day from 10 a.m. Cape Town from 10 a.m. the whole day. I'm in East London. Meet me there because I want things to keep on shifting in your life. You must have stubborn faith. Are you understanding me? Hannah kept on going to Shiloh to appear before the anointed servant of God, Eli. Eli the priest. She kept on going. The Bible says year after year. She kept on going until Samuel was produced. Many people give up before their Samuel is produced. You must keep on appearing to the anointed servant of God until your Samuel breakthrough is produced. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how stab on that problem can be it will bow to the anointing hallelujah and then with bank my god i'm coming to with bank on sunday sunday from 4 p.m sunday the second eh? you will go to your church go to your family then sunday you rush back to with bank to see me there at the forties hotel the conference hall will be packed there i will meet you sunday second the service starts 4 p.m will finish by 9 p.m at night 4 p.m to 9 sunday the second on the second of December, Sunday the second, I mean with back, Sunday and Monday. And then finally we are coming to Johannesburg. My God, on the first of December, it's a Saturday. We are in Johannesburg. It will be powerful. Johannesburg. You know where we meet Destiny Worship Center. It will be a Saturday of Saturdays. Come ready with your 500 rand. Save it now to buy your full new package, deliverance package of Apostle Justice. And your life will never be the same. And then the people of Nancy, eh, 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 in Komazi. I'm coming to Nancy. Nancy in the, 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 the Nkomazi province. And Nancy Stadium, 7 December. It's a Friday. It's an all night of salvation and deliverance. Gather there in Nancy. Tell others, Apostle is coming to Nancy at the stadium. It will be a big crusade. Hallelujah. Our crusade track, the big one, will be there. 
and we will shake that press. We will crush all demons. We will destroy every Togolosh. We will crush it with that truck. Your life will remain free. 7 December, I'm coming to Nancy. Hallelujah. Call the numbers on the screen and don't miss me when I'm coming to an area near you because I want you to finish 2018 like never before. You'll finish strong and start 2019 in high gear. Join the many people whose lives have been transformed through the ministry of Apostle Justice. God bless you. Amen. Welcome back. Praise the name of the Lord. We are on the subject experiencing total deliverance, entering or experiencing the life of victory so that you can serve the Lord your God and fulfill your purpose undisturbed. Hallelujah. I told you that there are many people who make contact with me who are suffering. Their lives are at a standstill. They are plagued by different problems. They tell me, men of God, nothing works out in my life. I try this. It fails. I've lost a lot of money. I'm in debt. I'm stressed by debt. I've been in different relationships. I'm failing to be in a stable relationship. It's like my life is followed by misfortune upon misfortune. Men of God, I've worked for many years. I accumulated a lot of good assets and now I've been repossessed of my house, my cars. My life is upside down. We need to break the spirit that is behind all these losses and failures and setbacks. And we will do it using the mighty name of Jesus Christ, using the word of God, which is like a hammer that crushes every nonsense of the devil, together with the blood of Jesus that redeems you from every bloodline generational curse that has brought these misfortunes upon your life. Hallelujah. Now, for you to experience total deliverance, I've told you and I will repeat it again. Number one, you need to fully and truly devote your life to God. You have to devote your life to God. You've got to surrender the life to God. I'm talking beyond just going to church because there are people who go to church every Sunday but if truth can be told they don't have a healthy solid relationship with God that's where it begins you need to surrender your life to God the Bible says in Job 22 verse number 21 submit yourself to God and be at peace with him in this way prosperity will come to you it means your life will begin to be restored will become fully restored back to how it ought to be once you align yourself to god's will and purpose and correct your relationship with god i don't want us to you know to take this matter for granted we were never created to truly succeed and be fulfilled in life without a healthy relationship with god you need to have a a healthy relationship with God. Without that healthy relationship, every other effort will be futile. It means even if I pray for you, I deliver you today. The curses that will follow you because you don't have a relationship with God will water down, will scatter every good effort that has been, you know, applied in your life. Hallelujah. So you need to be in a good, solid relationship with God. Whether you are a man, window to pegile manje, umfaz, umamung pegile manje, winces or windom. You need to take it upon yourself, take it upon your life to say me, myself and I, I now take this decision. It's not an easy decision, but it's a worthwhile decision. I surrender, I submit my life to God and I accept the word of God. I accept the word of God to be the standard of my life. It means whatsoever the Bible teaches, I will follow, I will fully subscribe to. I will allow everything that is from the word of God to regulate my life. That is the beginning. Hallelujah. Until we help people to correct their relationships with God, their lives will never be corrected. Hallelujah. So please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. And I thank God because I'm not just saying to you, do it. I've designed a booklet. It's called my very important daily prayer booklet. 
This booklet, it helps you to establish, to enter into a healthy relationship with God. You pray it day by day and it establishes you into a healthy prayer lifestyle. All the people who come to see me, my partners, they get this prayer booklet. It will change your life because until your relationship with God is all right, your life will never be truly all right. Did you hear what I've said, dear viewer, that all? Until your relationship with God, your maker, is truly all right and okay, your life will never be truly all right and okay. Hallelujah. Uma ubjelo anebako nungulungulu. Bunga si right. You are born on muntu ya and every Sunday. But the way you are living your life, God is not happy. Truly, God will never be able to bless you the way he wants to bless you. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 84 verse number 11, God will never withhold any good thing from the person who walks uprightly before the Lord. It means the person who has a good relationship with God. Because I need to say this, many Christians go to church, they don't have a good relationship with God. The way they treat other people, the way they lay down other people, the way they talk evil about other people, the way they do so many bad things in their daily conduct. It's amazing. You need to ensure that you submit your life to God and say, my life Life will be upright. I will only pursue things that are right. Anything that is evil, I will never do. Why? Because the Bible says misfortune, misfortune, bad things and bad luck follows the person who lives a crooked, wicked life. Hallelujah. Evil follows the sinner. Misfortune follows the person who does evil. Hallelujah. So it's very important. So submit your life to God. Do it very sincerely. Allow Jesus to become the Lord and the Savior of your life. Allow Jesus to fill you with the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can begin to alter your conduct, alter your character, alter your behavior, and even help you to know how to live harmonious with other people so that it's never you who lets down people it's never you who breaks the heart of other people it's never you who do wrong things to other people why because you've got a healthy relationship with God God is a God who takes care of all of us his creation so if you are a Christian you must know how to be a blessing to other people. Take care of other people. Don't break other people's hearts. Hallelujah. So that the favor of God will begin to manifest in your life. That's why the Bible tells us clearly. It says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And then it also says, blessed are the peacemakers, those who show peace, who do good to other people in other words. It says those people shall be called sons of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm asking you, I'm begging you, be devoted to God. That is, it's an assignment. Don't worry, I'll give you the booklet that will help you live your life in that way. That's why you need to come to my meeting so that you get these life-changing materials, not, not this motivation, not faith, no. People People have heard a lot about faith. I want you to live your life according to the order of the Bible so that you experience total deliverance. Hallelujah. Now, and then after you have devoted your life to God, the second thing you need to do, you need to connect yourself to an anointed servant of God. I've told you. God does not do deliverance from heaven. God, when he does deliverance, he does it using a human agent. You need to understand that here on earth, when God wants to deliver someone, deliver people out of trouble, he will do it to a large extent or most of the time using a human agent. That's why the Bible reads like this. I want to show you a verse that will amaze you. It is here here in the book of Acts chapter number 7. Because we are talking about your deliverance. You must be delivered from all this misfortune. The Bible in the book of Acts chapter 7 verse number 35. It says, this Moses whom they rejected 
saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? It is the one God sent to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to them in the bush. This verse is a connection or a narration of what happened when God delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. It says in Hosea 12 verse number 13, by a prophet, by a human vessel, by a human being, God delivered Israel from bondage. He took them out. Hallelujah. When God wants to deliver you, this is why he anointed many servants all over South Africa, all over the world. They are anointed servants of God, male and female. They are anointed so that they become deliverers of God's people. So after you have accepted Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, rush and submit yourself under an anointed servant of God who preaches the word of God because the word of God is a deliverer who will equip you with knowledge so that you know how to stand against every attack of the enemy. You know how to deal with all these bloodline generational cases. Praise the name of the Lord. God does not come down to perform baby dedications. You know when a baby is dedicated in church, you'll never see God or an angel dedicating that baby. God does not come to conduct weddings and marriages. God does not come to conduct burials of dead relatives. God does not come down to lay hands on the sick. Hallelujah. That's why when Jesus went, he told the disciples, go and preach the gospel, casting out demons healing the sick. It means he delegated this responsibility of administering deliverance upon people who need deliverance into the hands of human beings, into the hands of human agents. Hallelujah. We have this mandate. So you need to connect yourself with an anointed servant of God and plant yourself in a church that practices, that believes in the full gospel. It means the gospel of salvation the gospel of deliverance from demonic powers and curses, the gospel of deliverance and healing from sickness and disease, the gospel of being filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit so that you live a powerful life. Hallelujah. You've got to stand up for your life. You must stand up and position yourself or establish yourself in a place where you know that the miracles of God will happen. And there are many churches of God all over South Africa, all over the world that are operating in that dimension. Hallelujah. There are many challenges we are facing in the days we live in. So you need to stand up for your life. You need to correctly position your life. Hallelujah. Many people are suffering, but when you look at them, they are not correctly positioned. Where they are, the power of God is not moving. And the power of Satan is wrecking havoc in their lives because they are sitting in churches where the power of God is not moving. The power of God needs to move because you know what? The Bible says we are wrestling not against flesh and blood. We are wrestling against principalities. These are fierce demons with hierarchies, with ranks and power. It says we are wrestling against principalities against rulers of this this dark world we are wrestling against powers of darkness we are wrestling against spiritual hosts of wickedness operating and and launching their attacks from the heavenly places what are you talking about the devil has gone all out to kill to steal and to destroy that's why you as an individual you need to be hooked up with the mighty powerful god and you need to be positioned in the church where the power of God is at work, where the true word of God is proclaimed. Holiness is a standard. The fear of the Lord is a standard. Russia's living is a standard. The people are taught to respect one another, take care of one another, you know, love one another. And the word of God is proclaimed because God's power can never operate in an environment where there's no righteousness and holiness. Praise the name of the Lord. It will be the devil's power operating in that setup. Praise the name of the Lord. So you need to hook yourself up 
with an anointed servant of God and sit under a church where the anointing is flowing. Hallelujah. And also I need to add, because you need to know that in the days we live in now, even youngers, which doctors, you know, they also do their own thing. So there's a competition. That's why you need to draw the line. That's why Jesus said you shall know through servants of God by their fruit by their fruit. If you check, you read your Bible, it says you shall know them and see them by their fruit. So you must also take note of what kind of life that servant of God who is a servant of God is living. You've got, it's your responsibility. We now live in the information age. You must Google, you must check what kind of life is my pastor living? What kind of life is my preacher living? It's very important because your whole destiny depends on the pastor, on the person you sit under for spiritual empowerment. Hallelujah. I am justice. I've got to tell things as they are because many people are deceived. And the Bible told us that a, a lot of God's people will be deceived in the last days. Be careful. Hallelujah. But here is the matter. If you want total deliverance, sit under an anointed servant of God who walks in the fear of the Lord, who respects people, who conducts his life, his or her life with integrity. Are you understanding me? Integrity. Integrity is the key because God's power requires that we be holy like him for it to flow. Jesus lived an example for us. We know how a life of a true servant of God should be. Praise the name of the Lord. So you shall be delivered. Hallelujah. So connect yourself and sit under that anointed servant of God. Sit under that anointed servant of God. Don't leave a church that preaches the word. Don't leave a church that demonstrates God's power. People are delivered. Hallelujah. All you need to do is you must connect your spirit, connect your heart with that servant of God so that the anointing and the special grace God has placed upon the life of that servant of God, whether it's a man or a woman, can begin to manifest in your life. Many people go to church, they just sit in the pew. By Samuel Apemuva. I got a connection with the church. They don't even bring their ties to the church. They don't even give special offerings and special gifts to the the servant of God who is their spiritual covering. That's why you find that the anointing is not working in their lives because that connection is not there. I'm Apostle Justice. The suffering must come to an end. There is no curse. There is no misfortune that the anointing of God upon an, an anointed servant of God will not break. It will destroy it because the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 10 27 when you read it in the King James it says in that day the bedding shall be removed from your shoulder and the yoke of the enemy shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing that God places upon his servants all over the world, it is a yoke destroyer. It is misfortune terminator. It is demonic spirits ejector. It will eject every demonic spirit and your life will be very free. There should be I don't even know how to express my, you know, my disappointment. There's no reason. There shouldn't be Christians who are suffering. Not when South Africa has got so many anointed servants of God. What is happening? We need to connect. You must not be a frog. You know, you are in a church, but you are sitting like a frog. You are not stable. The Bible says in Psalm 92 verse number 13, it is those who are planted, planted, planted. Do you understand English? Planted in the house of God that will prosper. So you need to be planted in a church under an anointed servant of God and be a bona fide solid member in that assembly. And the anointing will begin to do wonders for you. God preserves all his people. Did you hear what I've just said? He preserves all his people from all the calamities, the fatalities, the sufferings, the attacks of the last days. He preserves his people because this is the body of Christ. These are God's people. This is the heritage of Jehovah. He preserves them by the special grace, the special anointing, the special authority has placed upon his servants. Are you understanding me? So you must respect your pastor, respect your man of God. Respect your woman of God. Respect the servant of God under whom God has placed you. The anointing will begin to protect you. That's why. Check again the verse in the book of Hosea 12, 13. By a prophet, God delivered Israel. It means once you connect yourself with an anointed servant of God, your deliverance is guaranteed. It says by the hand of the prophet, Israel was what? 
was preserved. That's how you'll be delivered. You don't need a special prayer. You don't need, uh, you don't need a special prayer. You need faith. You need understanding. You need to connect yourself well. Did you hear what I've said? You need faith in God, faith in the servant of God. Why is this important? If you believe in God, you get established. If you believe in the servants of God, you begin to prosper. As the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 20, 20. So you need faith in God. God is in heaven. And now you need faith in the servants of God. The servant of God under whom you are sitting. Believe in that servant of God. Believe in the anointing that is upon the life of that servant of God. Never doubt it. Are you understanding me? And also you need to connect yourself well. How do you connect? By your heart, by your special gifts. You release special offerings. You support that servant of God. You bless the anointing that is upon that servant of God. The anointing upon the life of that servant of God will now be thrown to you and it will destroy every spirit of misfortune. And lastly, before I sign out, remember that we need to be supported. So our bank accounts are on the screen. You can either use the APSA bank account on the screen or the FNB bank account on the screen, two of them. And notice that the FNB account has changed. It's a new one. We had to change it. Hallelujah. So please, you use these bank accounts, you release your support. This is where your deliverance begins. The moment you start supporting an anointed servant of God like myself, God of the anointed servant of God will begin to support you. Curses will be broken from your life. Misfortune will begin to go because your offering connects you to the anointing of the servant of God and that anointing comes upon your life to destroy every misfortune, destroy every curse and begin to pave a way for you. Praise the name of the Lord. So you must support us. The numbers are on the screen. Hallelujah. And remember to call us and tell us if things are happening in your life. If you are blessed by our sermons, you send us an email. We are, we are inspired by those emails. Send them, call us and tell us that hey this program is really helping me i thank god for apostle justice hallelujah may god keep you may god bless you may your life keep on going upward and forward you and your children never go down again always go upward and forward because apostle justice the servant of the lord blesses you with a powerful blessing that will break all chains of failure may you do well the rest of the year and in the coming years in jesus mighty name i bless you thank you for tuning in Tune again, same time. Don't forget this same time. This time, forget. I'm always appearing this time on this channel, this day. And my God will bless you always. Amen. So, basically, so when <laughs> 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 Nas figures lala la panomanga bes figulele. Baba ke wa wasinge ay natile gam postal gallum cause
Hey, my son, Wablala Spogo. You are not happy. You are happy. Yeah. I said, Kettle and Nova Lacus Spogo. So, Lona, Lona. Long a pillar, fun and nothing a pillar song of Funtus Nova, Sassetala, Matina, Lina Lodam. Bang you found 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 you now, then figure Shot Ungati by the Spirit. What a cool opera by the Spirit is all. Spafaga Bonke Bafund is city gambe gambe gambe. Cause our TV. Besaba no good tala. One of the bantry inking a bagu sugar, be so that Nanga Begel and Yogam Fund is a pillis at Natasa CS. Nataman is what he has been doing. I see the yoga in front is a court and not. Hey, yeah. We were once. Hey, hey, this guy, man, is a powerful young man. Near beans and nine cotillas, the Oh, Na look on the channel of Nanagua one year's grass, your coach running in your fundi, Shiman. Praise the Lord, oh my God. Man, come a lark. Must pass that to soak. Yeah, Mama. That's the right one. I won't go see her. It's by the Spirit. She knows me by the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my God! Babu, I go to the Let's go to the school and join. Eh, when you push my poop, pull my arm, you can't do that. Let me figure my push and lay off. Man, just like you put us, put us, let's grab our hands, but you can't let go. So, let push and let me figure. You figure that in the hole. You figure that we're still hole of it. Neil. Hmm. But when you let go, when you pick a knife, but now come over, all of it, and you let go. But in all the long tela, I want to have figure from this episode. I'm not lost as being a start up in a feeling. I'm bamba. We sell a pass. I'm graveyard and a spagel and as I was a little cool. I shall and flow. I pity the wapel and the feeling. I la push and my pity the pity the show. Yeah, pity a pity pity so well. I pass and a boy and la push and acting as an sanguary to a tangle moon to sing at some funa. Not saying for no more poise, I don't say for the same that will wash or sing with a little moon. What in a lap or swell up on just a pins. I should be so good as a good angel of Balegal Moon. I'm from this old Jalo, I love them, but it is in corner. I'm from this in Laran Cooler and Jim Pelag Zagos. I was a shoop. Praise the name of the Lord. May God keep you. Lumdana Nimnagel, this is not an ordinary child. 
This child gun nengla satan chela gun. No mag nenging aleni endi lenda uvangalomda. When she becomes three, la kaya nati zvile nel poisa la gamoya. Take care of the child. We make a miracle walk and promise keep a light in the darkness. That is who you are. We make a miracle walk and promise keep a light in the darkness.